On today's episode, we'll be installing a dual Z axis on our Vox Lebequila, and we'll be doing so with a timing belt. And that means this is part two of my three part dual axis series. And here we go. Folks, welcome. I am Leo of Prince Leo 3D, and this is part two of my three-part series of installing a dual Z-axis on our Fox Lip Aquila. Part one had us install a dual Z-axis using two stepper motors, while today's video is going to have us install that same dual Z-axis, but this time installing a timing belt that's going to synchronize our vertical movement. And while the two methods of installing a dual Z-axis are slightly different, the overall idea is not, and that is stabilization across our X axes. The stock Vox Lab Aquila has a single Z rod that moves this X axis up and down. Now, because it's only one rod, it means that the X axis is really only being braced on this one side. So heavier print heads that move out along this X axis, the passive side, may cause it to dip or sag. Now, in my experience, that's really never been an issue. But if you're adding some modifications to your print head, maybe a direct extruder, or you're doing a double fan setup, that added weight may play a factor in how stable this X-axis is on that unsupported side. How do we counteract that effect? Well, we add a dual Z-axis. Now, by adding this second Z-rod, also known as the lead screw, we're going to brace the vertical movement or the X-axis on both sides, which should maintain the print head no matter how much added weight is applied. Now, just like part one, we will be adding a second zero, but in this part, we're going to add a timing belt, and that will synchronize the movements of both these separate zeros. Now, I keep saying this is a three-part series, and in part three, we enter an entirely different galaxy, where we will be installing a community designed and created dual Z setup. Designed by Kevin, aka Sam, we will be driving the Z-axis with two belts. And the synchronization method will be a rod that runs across the top of our printer, driven by a stepper motor that is also mounted on top. It's a really fun installation. It allows for a lot of personality because it's a mostly 3D printed setup. And it offers the same and maybe even more benefit as part one and part two. But that, however, is part three. It's a little bit in the future. The first thing we need to do is get through part two. And as always, all the parts I use in this installation will be linked in the description below. Let's get to the installation of a dual Z access with a timing belt on our Voxelab Aquila. And here's the unboxing for our dual Z access with timing belt. And if you blink, you're going to miss it. And even though it doesn't look like a lot, it is everything we need to install this timing belt kit. This comes with two Z rods as well as all the fasteners. Here's what you need for the carriage or the stabilizer plates. This is the pieces that make up the belt tensioner. These are the pieces that go together for the new passive block. And these are all the accessories that will assemble the complete passive block. Now that we've seen the parts, let's see how they all work. The first step in this installation is to remove the top rail. Very simple. There's only four screws, two on the left side, two on the right. During the installation of these two new Z rods, we're going to be installing carriage plates. And they're going to go over the screws that are in this top rail. Because of that, we're going to need longer screws and they should have came in your kit. This will actually make this build easier because when the top rail is removed, we can now assemble the passive block off the printer and slide it on, as opposed to assembling that passive block while it's mounted on the printer, which can be a little tricky. After that, we begin to disassemble the passive block. We do that by unscrewing the two outer wheels. Now, this is a pretty simple setup. There's a screw that runs through the wheel, a spacer, and the passive block. On the other end of the screw, it's tightened down or secured with a nut. So we take the wrench that came with the printer, we secure the nut, and then we loosen the screw from the other side. When the top one's finished, I go down and I remove the bottom one. Once those wheels have been removed, we can unscrew the actual passive block. There's a screw right at the back of that belt tensioner. Get that one out. The last screw is next to the lone wheel that's still on the passive block. Once both those screws have been removed, we can wiggle the passive block free. Mm -hmm. 
Once the passive block has been removed, we're going to remove that final wheel. And this is the wheel that has the eccentric nut or the eccentric spacer attached to it. And there'll be a washer between the screw head and the passive block. Make sure you hold on to that. Now you're gonna have to add this threaded coupler to the new passive block. I don't know why I installed it like this, but this is incorrect. Make sure that the flared out portions of that brass threaded coupler are below the ledge in the passive block. This is a picture of how it's supposed to be installed. That being said, we are now going to put together the passive block assembly. The first thing I do is line up the two passive blocks. I wanna make sure that I'm installing this correctly. I start with the old passive block. I put all the screws in and then I'm going to start with the wheel that has the eccentric nut. Drop that eccentric nut right down onto the screw. After that the wheel goes on and I put the spacer on. Then I go to the two other wheels. A spacer goes on, the wheel goes on, and then a spacer goes on. Once all the wheels have been completed like that, I put the new passive block on top. Then I secure everything down with a nut. Now is the time where we're going to fully tighten these wheels. We are assembling this off the printer. We don't have to worry about doing any work while it's on the printer. So we tighten everything down now and then we can just slide this on the vertical rail. Of course, we will go back and check these wheels once it is on the printer. To fit this passive block on, I'm going to remove the belt tensioner entirely. Then we can slide this now assembled passive block down the vertical rail and in position. Then we need to re-secure the belt tensioner and tighten up the belt. Now make sure also to secure the screw that's in the front of the belt tensioner. Now here you'll see, and this is common on the Aquila, that the screw going into the back of the belt tensioner doesn't quite get tight. What we need to do is add a washer between the screw and the tensioner, and that's pictured here. We only have one more screw left to go to tighten down this passive block, and that's next to the wheel with the eccentric nut. And then double check the tightness on those wheels before moving on. With the passive block now finished, we can start on the new Z-Rods. I start by stabilizing the X-axis because once this Z-Rod is removed, that axis will fall and you wanna make sure you have something under there to brace it. Next, loosen up the screw in the upper portion of the Z-Coupler and remove the Z-Rod by twisting and pulling it upwards. Now right here is a shot that shows the length difference between the shorter stock rod and the longer rod that comes in the kit. The added length is necessary to attach the belt and gear that will drive both of these new rods. And now we can install the new rod. And while we twist it into position, I take this opportunity to lubricate it. Then tighten back down that set screw in the upper Z coupler. The new side is a little different as there is no stepper motor or coupler at the bottom. Again this time I lubricate the rod and let it twist to the bottom of the rail which I have covered with a towel because again there is no stepper and there is no coupler. For now we're going to take a break from the printer and assemble a few more components and if you wanted this portion could be actually assembled prior to the build. That's how I did it. I'm only adding it in here to make the timeline cohesive. The first thing we assemble is the carriage plates or the guide plates that will stabilize the top of the two new Z-Rods. After both are finished, we can assemble the belt tensioner for the timing belt. The two metal spacers go on the screw, that's where the belt will sit. Underneath that, place the plastic spacer. Now pass the screw through the tensioner plate. It doesn't matter which way it goes, that plate is double-sided. And tighten up the nut on the other side. 
The last two screws are fixed with T-nuts that will lock into the channels of the upper extrusion and they can be adjusted for tension on the timing belt. Moving back to the printer, place the top rail back onto the printer and place the carriage place on top. Using the two longer screws that came with the kit, we start to secure down the top rail. Now don't tighten these plates down fully as we will need them a little loose when we add the timing belt later on. Make sure they're stiff, but that they're able to rotate inwards just for now. Now I move on to the other side and add the carriage plate, longer screws, and for this one, we'll need to slip the plate around that Z-Rod. And you can also take this opportunity to move the spool holder out of your way for easier access, just like I did. Now place the washer onto the Z-Rod that is through the carriage plate and then add the gear. You will likely have to loosen the set screw to slide the gear in place. Just make sure to tighten it back up once it's set in position. Now we can start on the new Z-Rod by lifting the rod and adding the washer. We're aiming to have the same amount of Z-Rod exposed through the carriage plates on both sides. Again, install the gear and tighten down the set screw. Now install the belt tensioner equidistant from both the Z-Rods. We are likely going to have to adjust this for tension on the belt, so don't tighten this down fully. Here I am just showing you to rotate these carriage plates inward, and that's going to help us install this timing belt as it's very taut. Once the belt is on, we can straighten out the carriage plates and then tighten down the screws of the carriage plates. We want them perpendicular to the top rail. Once that's finished, you can adjust the tension on the belt tensioner to take up any slack that may be left in the belt. And I rotate the Z coupler and that brings that X axis through the full range of vertical motion. I wanna make sure there's nothing binding, nothing sticking. You should also notice some added resistance while rotating that coupler, and that's perfectly normal with this timing belt setup. The next step is to tram or level the X axes. We want the distance between the X axes and the base extrusion to be the same on both sides. We need something of identical height. In my example, I'm using two dry erase markers that I measured to be identical height. We'll be adjusting the passive side. That's the side without a stepper motor. And the first thing we do is release the set screws in the gear driving the belt. Once those screws are released, you'll be able to move the Z-Rod and that side up and down to accommodate any difference in the level from either side. Now I'm making a gross adjustment right here, but I'm just showing you exactly how easily it moves. I start by sliding my leveling tool under the axis that has the stepper motor behind it. This is similar to bed leveling. When I get some tension under that leveling tool, I go to the other side and I try to match that tension. In my example, my leveling tool, the marker, would not go under the axis, meaning it was too low. I had to bring it up. I loosened the set screws and I started adjusting that axis. Now keep in mind, as you're adjusting the passive side, the side with the stepper motor may also be moving. Once I finish, I tighten back up the set screws and then I re-measure the level on both sides to make sure nothing has moved on the stepper motor side. When I'm confident I have the same amount of tension on my leveling tools under each axis, I can move on. Now before powering on your printer, make sure to adjust the tension on the eccentric nuts on the inner rails if you haven't done so already. We don't need to make any firmware or slicer changes once we're finished with this installation. First thing I do when I power my machine on is auto home it to make sure everything is running smoothly. Then this time using the onboard menus, I move my X axis again through the vertical range. Now I have to re-level my bed, readjust my Z offset. After those two things are done, I'm free to start printing.
And just like that, we have come to the end. It wasn't all that hard. And I have to say, I don't really see much printing difference from when I had a single Z rod to this dual Z setup. There's no arguing. However, a lot of people have reaped tons of benefits from a dual Z axis setup. Just me, in my experience, I haven't really noticed much of a print improvement with and without the dual Z experience. However, in general, if you are seeing issues in the vertical movement of your 3D printer, this dual Z axis is likely a great addition for you. Now, of course, if you are experiencing vertical movement issues, we need to consider other possibilities before we jump to a dual Z axis. First and foremost, the eccentric nuts or the eccentric wheels. The two wheels on the inside of this dual Z axis are able to be tensioned, and we want to make sure that they are tight to this Z axis so we get proper movement in the vertical plane. So make sure you do your due diligence on checking certain things, just like those eccentric nuts, before you dive into a dual Z setup. And now I'm not trying to deter anybody at all. I know tons of people who have benefited from a dual Z setup. I just want to share my experience of not having a drastic printing improvement or an improvement at all when I install the dual Z setup. That being said, thank you all so much. I just uh, recently looked at some YouTube analytics and I think only about three people are staying around to watch this outro. Uh, <laughs> I would say thank you to my mom, but I know she doesn't even watch these videos at all. So whoever you are out there, if you stayed around this long to watch this portion, I really appreciate it. And if you comment, thank you. You're starting a conversation, no matter what you're saying. If you're asking a question, if you don't like how I'm doing certain things, it's great for our channel and it's great for our community. Thank you for taking the time to do that. And if you wanna join a broader conversation on 3D printing, maybe you don't have anyone in your real day-to-day -day life that you can talk to about 3D printing, join the Prince Leo 3D Discord. We talk daily. We post models, tips, ask questions. It runs the full gamut. It's starting to be its own little bustling community. And I thank everyone who has logged on, joined up, and has contributed there. Now on the horizon, I have some pretty cool stuff coming. I have a clipper for the Voxelab Aquila video coming that includes all the different chips, STM32, G32, H32, N32. We're going to put clipper on these machines. You're going to love it. Trust me. And I'm also going to be installing and comparing some filament sensors, including a smart filament sensor from Big Tree Tech. And that itself was a viewer requested video. So again, want to leave a comment either here or on the Discord. If it's something you want to see, I will make my greatest efforts to try and accommodate that. So long as I feel comfortable relaying that information. I never want to give you guys and girls anything that I don't really know about or anything I haven't sunk my teeth into fully. So I want to make sure I'm at least slightly educated about a topic before I speak on it. And then I don't know when because it's currently sitting on a shipping container in the Atlantic, but I have a Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon en route to my house. I cannot express how excited I am to open the box and see what all that printer is capable of. Now, do me a favor. Don't tell my wife how expensive it is. I don't think she knows. But so far, the X1 has been well received by the backers that received their printers. And I am waiting with bated breath to finally get mine. And I have a pretty interesting video I want to try and film with that printer, the X1 Carbon. So stay tuned for that. I said thank you. I'll say it again because I mean it. Thank you all so much. And again, as always, until next time, boys, girls, everyone else, keep on printing.